guys, we're going to be going through the 2016 apply probability methods in problem solving in solving problems 2016 internal, uh, sorry, external. Let's look at question one. Question one says the trees in Brookhaven apple orchard are harvested twice a year. As the apples ripen at different times, records from previous years have shown that during the first harvest, 70% of the apples are picked. So when you see the first event occurring, just remember that if you have a first event, second event, and a third event with a probability, it means that you're dealing with some kind of tree dive. So 70% of apples are picked, while the rest are left. At the second harvest, 35%, and when they say the rest are left, they want you to actually find the missing probability. You've got 70% over here, so you need to then realize that the rest would be 30%. At the second interval, 35%, and then 65% will be left. All right. It says all the apples now that are picked go to a packing shed. And from in, that's all the ones that get picked. All right. So we have to now look at the ones that get picked over here with a 70% chance and a 35% chance here. And after that, we've got another branch where they either exported or they go locally, or in this case here, the rest is sent to factory. So let's draw a tree diagram to show this over here. So the first event will have its first branches like this. And we're saying that 70% is going to be the probability that they will be picked. and 30% that they will be left. The next part says, okay, well, at the second harvest, 35%. So obviously, if they left behind, then they go into the second harvest. If they get picked, then they don't go into the second harvest. So in this case here, we would say 35% and 65% would be the probability of being picked on the second and left 65% after that. Once they get picked, 9% go for export. So we have 0 0.09 that it would go into the export category. It's very important to get this diagram right because this kind of makes your life much more easy, much more easier after this. The next one is 31%, so 0 0.31 that they will be sent for sale to the local market and the rest sent to a factory. So the rest, you know, the word, the rest, they always use the word, the rest. So they not giving you enough or enough information. Wherever you see rest, just remember that's where you have to subtract the probabilities. These probabilities always add up to one. So that means that this would have to be 0 0.6 because then it will add up to one. And this is the rest that's going to be made into some kind of source. We then have at the moment picked over here. We also have 0 0.09 and 0 0.31. Exactly the same idea because it's getting picked as well. So 0 0.6 over here. I'm just going to write the words out as well. Export, local, and source. The question then follows on to say, find the probability that a randomly selected apple will not be picked. So what's the probability that it will not be picked? That means it would be left behind. So what's the probability that it would be left and left again and left right? So in other words, we have to use this pathway over here. And you can see that it would be 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.65. And that gives you 0 0.195. Okay, and that's the probability of not getting picked. Right, the probability of not getting picked at all. So the probability of getting picked, if ever asked, means that you have to find one minus this, which will give you that probability. The next question, what proportion of apples will be sent to the factory to be made into source? So what proportion? Okay, so like what is the probability of apples being sent to the factory and made into a source? So we know that if we want to get to a source, we've got to go over here and we've got to go over here, which means we have two options. We have two trails. We can go via picked and source, via left picked and then source. When you move along a tree diagram, remember that you have to multiply the probabilities to get the final outcome. So the first one is you're going to get picked and a source, right? So I'm going to write P and S. 
So that would be 0 0.7 times 0 0.6 plus that's the probability of getting picked and a source. Then plus the probability of getting left behind. I'm going to use L and picked afterwards and then made into a source would be the probability of, in other words, multiplying these together. So 0 0.3 is left, then gets picked times 0 0.35 multiplied by 0 0.6 after that. Once you calculate this, you'll end up with 0 0.42 plus 0 0.063, and you'll end up with 0 0.483. And that's the probability that it will be made into some kind of source. So that's a 48% chance that it will end up as a source. It then continues and says, if an apple is sold on the local market, then what is the probability that it will have been from the first harvest? All right. So... Let's go back to our tree diagram. If an apple is sold on the local market. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So it's sold onto the local market, okay, which is those two. It says there, if an apple is sold on the local market, what is the probability that it will have been from the first harvest? So we know that the first harvest was over here and the second harvest was over here. So we know that if it's from the first harvest, it means that we have to go to 0 0.7 of that happening and then 0 0.31 of it being local. So let's write that down first. So we got 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.31. Remember that's trailing this way here. Again, if an apple is sold in the local market, then what is the probability that it will have been from the first harvest? So the first harvest being 0 0.7 of being picked and 0 0.31 of being local. All right. Now, at the same time, we're saying that there's some kind of conditional probability taking place here. So it says here, if an apple is sold on the local market, then what is the probability that it will have been from the first harvest? Now, we have not got our denominator in this calculation, which means that we have to also take into account the fact that this is also a possibility, and we're taking that probability out of the sum of this and this probability in total. So let's work out the probability of it being local in the case where you are moving into the second harvest. Okay, so to calculate that probability, we would then take 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.35 and multiplied by 0 0.31. This will give you 0 0.217. This will give you 0 0.03255. And you can see this is going to be... Now, an apple sold in the local market can happen in two ways. It can happen in one, via the first harvest, or in two, via the second harvest. All right? So if we add it up, we will have the following. We'll have 0 0.217 plus 0 0.3255. And out of this, what is the probability that it was from the first harvest? So we then take 0 0.217 as a proportion of the sum of it being local. What's the probability it's local from the first harvest divided by the probability of it being local from either? This comes to 0 0.87. And that's your answer there. All right, let's look at question four now. There are two, one, 120 apples in export carton. Okay. If 172 cartons are produced, then how many apples were there in the total crop? So 120 apples in a carton and that many cartons. So let's take them and multiply them. So that'll be 20640. And the next thing is, it says how many apples were in the total crop? If 172 export cartons all right, are produced. So we're finding some kind of expected value. Or is this actually reverse rates? All right, so looking at 20,640, we need to firstly find the following. Okay, what is the probability of it being picked and an export left behind? 
and then picked and then an export okay so that's three that's two trails so we can go 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.09 okay so 0 0.07 multiplied by 0 0.09 plus 0 point 0 0.03 times 0 0.035 multiplied by 0 0.09. Let me just write it out quickly. 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.35 multiplied by 0 0.09. And this comes to 0 0.07245. Okay, so there are 120 apples in an export carton. Okay, and We've got 172 export cartons that are produced. So we know that that's how many apples would be produced. Okay. So we know that if I take a percentage times the total, I need to get to the total 20640. The percentage we apply in or the proportion or probability is 0 0.07245. And we multiply it by some total to get how many apples are exported 20640 the question is asking us for the total so when the question asks us for the total we're basically stating that from this we have to solve for the total so we divide and we say total will be equal to 20640 divided by 0 0.07245 and you can see that this is going to give you 284886 apples in the total all right that takes us on to question b all right it says a pepsi galore orchard only two varieties of apples jazz and beauty are grown twice as many jazz apples as beauty apples are grown table one below shows the proportions of each variety of apple that have been picked after both harvests have been completed okay let's just read it again make sure you understand it so you got pepsi galore orchard two varieties of apples jazz and beauty there's jazz there's beauty those the percentage that got picked the percentage that didn't get picked you notice that it adds up to one all right and in table two it says it shows us the proportion of picked apples for each variety that are exported lo locally sold locally or sent to a factory exported local or factory and then they have the proportion again of those as well again adding up to one let's just make sure we got zero point yep adds up to one and this way as well cross the question here says, what is the probability that an apple selected at random from the total crop, from the total crop, will be of the jazz variety? Okay, so we want it to be of the jazz variety. And we're saying that what is the probability that an apple selected at random from the total crop will be of the jazz variety? and will be sent to the factory all right so if it's going to be sent to the factory we know that firstly we have to pick jazz so if we're going to pick jazz we're going to have 0 0.85 okay and it's going to be sent to the factory so factory over here is 0 0.3 all right and lastly we have to also look at the fact that um we are using and so we're going to multiply them. So let's multiply them. We're going to go ahead and go 0 0.85 multiplied by 0 0.3. Okay, so we're only looking at the jazz variety. And in particular, we are using factory and picked. There's one thing we have to note here is it says twice as many jazz apples as beauty apples are grown. Now that's something that's new. So if you have a ratio jazz to beauty apples we're saying that the ratio means that you have two more twice as much as beauty so in other words the proportion of total of the total jazz would be two-thirds of the total 
So we have to then multiply it by two over three. Okay, because we got it, we got to get the jazz, um, which is two out of three, the proportion possibility, two out of three. That comes to 0 0.17, and that would be our final answer there. We multiply and remember using and, it has to be jazz, it has to be picked, and it has to come from a factory, so we're multiplying them together. Part two over here is a minimum of 120 of 294 export cartons produced at this orchard must be of the beauty variety. Okay, so we need to keep that table handy. Let's have a look at this table again. It says here, 120 of the 294 export cartons. Okay, so we're looking at this column over here. It says, produced at this orchard must be of the beauty variety. Okay, so we're looking at beauty variety. So 0 0.95 of choosing it. By showing calculations and support your answer, determine if this condition can be met. A minimum of 120. So what we need to firstly find is we need to find the probability of choosing beauty. Let's let's use the same principle that we used in this question where we took two out of three multiplied by 0 0.85 multiplied. Now we're going to use the same one, not for jazz now, but for beauty. So let's have a look at that. In total, we know that if we have to portion out beauty from being half the amount of jazz, we're going to take one out of three. So let's take one out of three of that. And we want to multiply it by the probability of it being picked, which is 0 0.95. And then we want to multiply it by, again, the next part, it being beauty and exported, because in particular what they want here is um, export cartons, right? So we're going to multiply it by 0 0.15. That'll come to 0 0.0475. Okay, that's the probability of that taking place. Now, it says here, a minimum of 120 of the 294 export cartons produced at this orchard must be of the beauty variety. So if this condition can be met, what we have to do is find the probability of it not being, so which means if we go back to this part of the year, we're going to have two thirds of it not being, all right? And if it's jazz, it's going to be 0 0.85. And at the same time, if it's exported with chairs in mind, it's going to become 0 0.068. So that's the probability of exports, whether chairs or beauty. Now we want to find out what is the what is the probability or what is the proportion of having only beauty. So we would add these two together, put this in our denominator, and we're going to end up with the following. 0 0.0475 plus 0 0.068. We want to bring all the exports together. And that's why we do this. We then take 0 0.0475, which is just beauty. That's what we want. And we take it as a proportion of the whole. Once we have this, we, we are including all exports, which is why we divide it. If we had to just use beauty, then we're not taking into account the fact that the possibility of jazz being picked has been accounted for. So by, by including this, we are accounting for all possibilities of exports, and hence we take now a portion of that, okay, relatively. So this ends up as 95 over 231 times 294 and we now multiply it by the 294 because we want to find out what is the portion of that and then this comes to 120.9 and we can say because 120 is more than 120 we say that the condition is met so therefore the condition is met right as the export cartons produced are within range or reach the minimum okay on those lines question two goes into crisp orchard 
Crisp orchard has two blocks of land where apples are grown. Apples from the larger block are grown by conventional methods, while the other block they are grown organically. A simple random sample of 1,200 apples is taken over both blocks and tested for disease. The results are summarized in the table below. The first question asks us for the proportion of apples all right, in the sample that were diseased. Okay, so we're looking at diseased, and we want to find the proportion in the sample that were diseased. So there's 1,200 in total. So we take 180 which were diseased, and we divide it by that. So 180 divided by 1,200 will come to 0 0.15. The next question says, what proportion of the diseased apples now we are reducing our sample space to just the diseased apples and we're looking at just the diseased apples which means our total will have to be diseased apples so 180 will go into our denominator from here are conventionally grown so then we trace back to conventional and we take 122 of those conditional probability in place 0 0.678 the next question says if there was a total of 171,000 organic apples grown. Then, based on the sample, how many apples would be expected to be grown conventionally and be diseased? So, if you're growing a total, if you have a total of 171,000 organic apples, and it says then based on this sample, which is 1,200 apples. We want to know how many would you expect to be grown conventionally and be diseased. Okay, now, firstly, if I look at the total that are diseased, we're looking at 1,122 of the total sample, all right, which is 1,200. And on that same token, if you want to have them conventionally grown, we also want to have them organic. So 122 out of 560, we would then multiply that by 171,000 as well. Okay, so there's two, there's two ways of working this out. Let's just look at the first or a more straightforward method of working this out. So we've got that many apples and we've got a random sample of 1,200 apples is taken over both blocks. Okay, now from this, we saying that the organic part comes from the fact that we have 560. All right, so we got 560 apples, and we saying that 171,000 organic apples grown, okay, and 1,200 apples taken over both the blocks. We need to now calculate what the grand total is or what the total would be and this is how we would do this so let's have a look at this we want it to be we've got to read this question very carefully so we want it to be grown conventionally and be diseased and be organic right so we got like a few things in mind here now if it's conventional and diseased, we know there's 122 ways of that happening, or possibilities of that happening. If it's organic, we know there are 560 which are organic. So, as a portion of those that are conventional, diseased, and organic, we can take 122 out of 560 and then multiply that by 171,000. That'll come to 37253.57. So therefore you would expect, you would expect thirty-seven thousand two hundred and fifty-four conventionally grown apples. Right, and that would be question part three. It is claimed that apples that are conventionally grown are at least twice as likely, are at least twice as likely 
to be diseased as apples that are grown organically. State whether you agree with this claim, showing your full calculations. So the first thing is we're saying that we've got conventional, diseased, and in particular, we're saying that conventionally grown is twice as likely. So let's work that out. We've got 122 out of 640. Okay, so conventional and disease, given that it's conventional, so 122 out of 640 will equal 0 0.19. It is claimed that apples that are conventionally grown are at least twice as likely, conventionally grown, are at least twice as likely to be diseased, diseased, as apples that are grown organically. Now, organically, all right, and diseased means that we have to take 58 and divide it by the total organic, which is 560. That gives us 0 0.1. What we then do is we then divide the two together. So we're dividing. We want to find out if it's going to come up to a total of 2. So we're going to take this, which is 122 over 640, and we're going to divide it by that, which is our relative rate. So we're going to go relative to this what is, as a ratio, what will this come to? So we've got five, uh, 427 over 232, and we're going to end up with 1.84. And you can see it is claimed that apples are conventionally grown at least twice as likely all right, to be diseased. All right, so that means this must be two times the amount of that. That's what we want. And if we divide it, we can look at it and say, okay, we've got 1.84. So you would probably not agree with this claim because it is suggesting that conventionally grown apples are at least two times more likely to get disease. However, we're not reaching the two mark. We're only getting to 1.84, so two would be overstating it. So therefore... we would say only 1.84 times more likely. And not twice as likely. I do not agree. with this claim it just falls short of the mark you know it's very close question b says now jazz and beauty varieties are grown in both blocks all right grown in both blocks so what what proportion of apples in the sample were of the jazz variety and diseased Okay, so jazz variety and diseased. So we know that if they were in the jazz variety and diseased, okay, so let's have a look at this. We got jazz, all right? How many do we have in total? We've got 890 that were the jazz variety. Then we've got beauty, which is a total of... Um, it says there 182. Okay, so we go 182. And um, it was found that 108 of you but were not diseased. Okay. Table 3 from the part has it. So, what proportion of apples in a sample were of the jazz variety and diseased? Alright, so basically. We're looking at now beauty. So beauty apples, okay. In total, we've got we've taken we're taking this this 1,200 and we're saying 890 of them were of the jazz variety. So again, they're not giving us the second part of this question. The second part of this question is how many apples are from the beauty variety, okay? So they're not telling us that. So we know that it does add up to 1,200. So then, if it adds up to 1,200, then this must be a total of 310 apples because then it will add up to 1,000.
200. Now that's just apples, right? That's your apples total. The question says what proportion of apples in the sample were of the jazz variety and diseased? So we're looking at this column over here, diseased. All right. Now they, they've basically apportioned all the apples into two types, jazz and beauty, but they haven't given us a table. They've, so we've got to use the totals in the table. And in particular, we want the grand total from the apples. And the next part is, it was found that 182 of the beauty variety were not diseased. 182 of the beauty variety were not diseased. But the question is asking us for the proportion of the jazz variety that is diseased. So we need to definitely look at try and find trying to find out how many of the jazz variety were diseased. All right. So I'm going to write here diseased and jazz. And that's our focus. That's how much we want to find out. That's that's what we want to find out. How many of that? Now, do we know how many were diseased? and of the beauty variety and what information can we take from the 182 of the beauty variety to get that total all right to get that grand total that we need so what we do know is that not diseased and jazz is a certain amount and not diseased and beauty is what we have. So I'm creating a new table and I'm saying, okay, well, 182 is going to be associated with that, which means that that which was diseased must be 310 minus 182, which is 128. And if I have 128, if it is, I need a total as well. Remember this first total adds up to 1,200. What is the total of disease? We know that's gonna add up to 180. I'm technically creating a new table. And then from this, I can see that the total disease that jazz using the information from beauty and tracing my way backwards and filling in the gaps so that they add up to the totals, I can see that 180 minus 128 will give me 52 that were diseased and of the jazz variety. And a proportion of apples, of all the apples in the sample means that we have to take it out of 1,200. So we take 52 out of 1,200, which is 0 0.0433. And that's the probability of it being jazz and diseased. It is claimed that apples are more likely to be diseased depending on the variety and when and sorry on the variety then whether they are conventionally or organically grown, whether they have been conventionally or organically grown. <clears throat> Can this claim be supported? Give calculations of absolute and relative risks to support your answer. Okay, it is claimed that apples are more likely to be diseased depending on the variety. So what is the variety we have? We have jazz and we have beauty. Those are the two varieties. Now, if it is, let's go back to the table. If it is um, diseased, all right, in total, we're saying that we've got 890 apples that are diseased. Okay, so let's go back to this table. We've got 890 apples which are diseased. So of the 890 apples, we're saying uh, 52 of them will be diseased. We calculated that using our recreated table from the previous question. And that comes to 0 0.0584. Then we also need to calculate the next part, which is if it's diseased and it's from the beauty variety, we have 128 out of the total number of in the beauty variety. And we said the total beauty variety is 310. So we're taking that divided by that and that divided by that in this next question. So we take 128 divided by 310 and that comes to a total of 0 0.4129. What we do then is we then divide it. We take 0 0.4129 because we want to, it's saying it claims that apples are more likely to be diseased depending on the variety, whether they've been conventionally or organically grown. Despite that, we're saying that there's some kind of significance if we divide this in some kind of relative risk. Okay, so you've got 0 
can be divided by 0 0.0584. Okay, so we got our absolute risks and then we get our relative risk. And we can see that this comes to 7.1. Now, we know from question four, conventionally grown apples are 1.84 more times likely to be getting the disease. So that's looking at the previous question, we said that 1.84 times it's you're more likely to get the disease if it's conventionally grown from this now we can see that beauty is 7.1 times more likely to get the disease all right and 7.1 is a lot lot larger than 1.84 okay so remember 1.84 was the calculation that we calculated focusing on conventionally grown all right and at the moment we're looking at um, diseased. Okay, so this was, let's go back to question four quickly. It is claimed that conventionally grown are less, are t at least twice as likely to be diseased as apples than if they're grown organically, right? So this was conventionally grown against organically. And from that, we got 1.84, twice as likely, and we didn't agree with the claim. Now we're saying, okay, well, given that this is now a comparison we are comparing conventional and organic in this calculation. But now we are comparing the two varieties, right? Jazz and beauty. And the question is asking us, it is claimed that apples are more likely to be diseased depending on their variety, which is what we're doing now, than whether they have been conventionally organically grown. So what they're actually wanting you to do is compare it to the 1.84 and as we know from question one conventionally grown so so we know that conventionally grown apples are 1.84 times more likely to get the disease times more likely to get the disease and from this we can see the beauty all right being the top is 7.1 times more likely beauty is 7.1 times more likely to get diseased as 7.1 is much more larger than 1.84 we can see that the species of variety has a larger impact than the method of growing 7.1 is greater than 1.84 so we can see comparatively as relative risk or calculating a rate divided by a rate we can see that the rates in comparison with regards to variety is much more evident in its difference than if it's conventionally versus organically grown. So we see that it has a larger impact than the method of growing. Therefore, it has a larger impact than the method and here we're comparing those two values. All right, let's have a look at uh, question three now. Question three says, apples are sent to a factory to be made into a sauce, then bottled. Testing has shown that when the bottling machine is operating correctly, the weight of the sauce dispensed into the bottle can be taken to be normally distributed with a mean of 310 grams and a standard deviation of 4.5 grams. Find the probability that a randomly selected bottle will contain between 310 and 316 grams of sauce. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate our Z value and then find the probability. We can use a calculator or we can use Z tables to find that. We know that 316 grams is the actual value that we want to find. 
we're going to subtract our mean, which is 310, and divide it by our standard deviation, which is 4.5. We end up with 1.333. And then finding the probability that x is now. Now we've got to decide it's going to be between the two values. So between means that we're looking at some kind of two-tail value. And we can put this in our calculator using and using our graphics calculator, you'll end up with the probability being 0 0.408. Okay, we got our Z value and we specify we're starting and our ending. And it will produce this. We can also use our Z tables and from that also find it. Double check this if you can and make sure that you understand how to get that probability in a separate exercise. Okay, the label on the source bottle states that the contents weigh 300 grams. Now, the bottles contain less than 300 grams are considered to be underweight. So drawing a normal distribution, we're saying that we've got our mean, which is at 310. Okay, so we put 310 at the center, and now we're saying that bottles that contain less than 300 grams are said to be underweight, all right? The question is asking us for the percentage that are underweight. So in other words, we can get this back into our Z distribution, get a Z value, and then work our way backwards. We could use a calculator as well. So let's calculate the Z value in our coding. We're transforming our data into our standardized normal distribution. And we want to find out what is this specific Z value that will produce this proportion. We can use our tables or we can use a calculator. So again, 300 minus 310, that's my mean, don't forget that. And my standard deviation is still 4.5. 300 is what we want. We want to find out the Z value, negative 2.222. Remember, negative is on the left-hand side there of zero. 2.22 positive side is that side. And from this, we then look it up. We end up with some probability. We'll end up with this probability to be 0 0.4869 and we know that the entire probability is 0 0.5 so we take 0 0.5 and we have to minus it so we take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4869 using z tables or using our calculator to get a 0 0.0131 this is one tailed and to the left that'll be the probability or proportion so the probability of having an underweight will be equal to 0 0.0131. And as a percentage, it will become 1.3%. A quality control process identifies bottles of sources that have contents over, that are overweight. When the machine is functioning correctly, no more than one bottle in 20 is overweight. If more than one in 20 bottles are overweight, then the machine must be adjusted. How many grams of source will a bottle contain before it is considered overweight? All right, so we have our normal distribution. Again, our mean is at 310. We are looking at overweight. Inverse normal distribution, what is this X value? Now, if we go back and we use our Z value, remember that, we can reverse this entire process. So if the mean is zero, in our standardized form and we find out what this z value is we can use our formula for z which is x minus mu over sigma and we can find out remember we want to find out what is x we know what that is we know what that is we're going to get what z is and we're going to use this probability or this proportion underneath this graph now it says here the quality control process identifies bottles of source that have contents that are overweight. Remember, average, overweight, underweight. When the machine is functioning correctly, no more than one bottle in 20 is overweight. That's very important. So 1 over 20 is 0 0.05, and that's 5%. So that means indirectly they've stated that the area that is overweight is 5%. So 5% means that we should look into our Z tables and go in backwards 
and go to 5% and work our way backwards or look for for 49.5 percent and work our way backwards depending on the z table that you have once you look it up you will find that the probability of it being less than x we know it's 0 0.95 we also know that this entire proportion is 0 0.95 depending on the table you need you can use 0 0.9 uh, table that you have you can find it from there so from this we get the z value and we know this actually 1.645 because that's normally what we have if we have some kind of uh, normal distribution remember standard normal distribution if we have five percent we're looking at 1.645 that's going to be our standard z value so 1.645 we know would be given for whenever the proportion is five percent okay 1.645 once you've looked at it and you found it you're going to end up with x minus 310 okay over my standard deviation all right which is 4.5 and we then solve this we end up with 317.4 to be x so this number over here will be 317.4 so any bottle weighing more than 317.4 will be considered overweight okay so bottles greater than 317.4 is overweight reverse normal distribution remember step one identify the percentage step two locate your z value step three substitute it into the formula and solve for x all right the quality control process involves taking a random sample, all right, and if more than one of the bottles is found to be overweight or underweight, then the machine is checked for possible adjustment. After taking a random sample, what is the probability that the machine is checked? We've got 0 0.1, 0 0.0131 plus 0 0.05, which will equal 0 0.0631. So the first thing over here is we saying that we got a 5%. So after taking a random sample, what is the probability that the machine is checked? The quality control process is a random sample of three successive bottles and measuring weights of their contents. Now remember 0 0.0131 was the percentage underweight and 0 0.05 is the percentage overweight. If we add it up, we know that this is going to be the range that it's out of. Okay. So if I take that, it says, um, if more than one of the bottles is found to be overweight or underweight, then the machine is checked for possible adjustment. So what does this mean? This means that if we're choosing three success, uh, successive bottles, we need to basically have um, one of them, okay, to be found overweight or underweight, then the machine is checked for possible adjustment. So, we're going to start with 0 0.0631, which is the probability in the first bottle, right? The quality control process involves three successive bottles, okay? And measuring the weights of their contents. If more than one of the bottles is found to be overweight or underweight, then the machine is checked for possible adjustment. So if it's overweight or underweight, that's the probability. So that's, that's on the first bottle. The second bottle, 0 0.0631, and then the third bottle is fine. So it can be 0 0.9369. Okay, so what we're doing here, we're saying that we can have the possibility of having a bottle which is not in the range. So basically, we're looking at um, a sample space, looking at if it's fine, and then it's checked and checked on the second and third bottle. That's one of the options. We can also have it checked and then fine and then checked. And then that's the third bottle, first, second, third bottle. So if we go to the next option, we can have it checked, checked, and fine. We can also have checked, checked, and checked. We can also have fine, fine, and fine, right? And we can also have the, the possibility of it being fine twice and checked. And that can happen in that many ways it's 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about eight ways so far of it being. Now we, we don't want it to be fine, right? And we want the possibility of it being checked. Okay. So as you can see, this is the uh, probability that it would be overweight twice. Okay, because it says more than one, it can't. They're not. It's not going to go in for checking if it's in this region over here. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're looking at 0 0.0631, which is the probability of it needing to be um, checked, right? More than one time. All right, so this this is the first time, second time, and then the third one is fine. Okay, so that's the three bottles, and this can be have this can happen in three ways. So we would multiply this by three, and then we would plus the chance of it happening completely, which is zero point, which is this over here, of being checked completely because zero point it will be that means every single bottle is either overweight or underweight, and in that case you would have this multiply. Let me just write it out so it looks more understandable 0631 and you can see that's the option of getting CCC check 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 this is the option of getting checked twice and not checked once you can't use this option because they want it to be more than so specifically it says they um, more than if more than one of the bottles is checked or found so we then put this in a calculator and we get our final answer and this will come to a total of 0 0.011 Four. All right. Okay, which is zero point zero one one four. All right, and that's the question for this one over here. This comes to the last part of our paper, and in this particular question here, we're given our graph over here, our normal curve, and then we have it converted into a bar graph. And we can see, sorry, a histogram, frequency histogram. A random sample is taken of 150 bottles. So we know that our total is 150. The first question asks us what proportion of bottles in this sample had contents that were underweight. And this, it says here, if the bottling machine was operating correctly, the weight of the source dispensed into a bottle would have been uh, probability distribution similar to the shape in figure one below. Okay, so this would be the dispensing again the weight of the source okay would be dispensed in that the new bottling machine is installed and then obviously a random sample is taken and you can see that if we had to draw some kind of um, normal curve this is where it would peak a random sample is taken the results are shown in the frequency histogram below what proportion of bottles in the sample had contents that were underweight and that is less than 300 grams that actually stayed in that figure. So less than 300 grams, we know, would be this part over here, and that's a total of 20. So we can see 20 out of the total 150 would be 0 0.133. That would be the proportion of that. The next question goes on and asks us, compare the probability distribution and frequency histogram that was obtained from the results of the sample. In your answer, you should consider the shape, center, and spread of both the distributions and provide numerical evidence. All right, if we're looking at the first one, all right, we're looking at the probability distribution over here, you can see it is symmetrical, all right, there's some kind of uh, symmetry, and it's also bell-shaped. It has only one mode, okay, which is the peak over here. And we can see that the average or the mean is 310. These are just characteristics that you can pick up from the curve. The mean is 310, centrally located, and the range starts from 296 to 324. So my range would be from 296 to 324. The mode is 310, which is the mean, obviously because of symmetry. So it follows the normal distribution so we're saying that this probability is normally distributed. They're not telling us that, so we're saying it follows the normal distribution quite well because the normal distribution you mean in your mode is the same. So we're looking at that from there. The frequency histogram, we're saying that it has a much more uh, smaller spread 
Okay, so frequency histogram is smaller spread. Okay, so we got a smaller spread. It starts from 298 and it stops at 312. Okay, so that will be our range. 298 to 312. And it does produce underweight bottles as well. In this case, the 20. The histogram is not quite bell-shaped, if you look at it. It's, it's kind of like doing that, but it's stopping here. So if I have to just curve it up like that, you can see that the one side is slightly more thicker. So it's not completely bell shaped and you can see that it's a little higher there, a little bit lower there. There's no symmetry. Okay. So we're saying not bell shaped, no symmetry, not bell shaped, no symmetry. This is what type of um, points that you want to indicate in your paragraph. And in this case, we say it is skewed to the right. So if the tail is over here, we're saying that it's skewed to the right. It's skewed to the right. And that means that it looks like that. Skewed to the right. And it has caused the mean to be slightly higher than the data. All right, it caused the mean to be slightly higher than the data. In the data, which is not as same as the mode, in other words, we're saying that comparing the mean and the mode, we can see that the mode is over here, all right? And we're saying that in total, um, it's slightly higher in the data, and it's not the same as the mode. Okay, so the mean would be that. Now, the group where the mode is found is 302 to 304, and that's this region over here. And we're saying that the average of the histogram is lower than the probability distribution. So if we calculate the average by taking the frequency and the weight into account, we will find that the mean of the histogram is lower than the probability distribution and not centrally located as the middle range is. So there's no central location. It's not normally distributed, right? So this would not be a normal standard normal distribution, not normally distributed. It's coming close to a normal distribution, but it's slightly skewed right over there. All right, and you can include those points in your answer, in particular on the next page, distributing it over the page. All right, that's it for this paper. And um, yeah, that's all the... Uh, giving you enough pages to write there. We'll cover the next paper soon. Thank you.